Boston, 1770. The American colonies, under British rule for over a century, are stirring with a newfound sense of identity and independence. The British, burdened by debt from their recent victory in the French and Indian War, have imposed a series of taxes on their American colonies. These taxes, seen as unjust and oppressive by the colonists, have fueled resentment and resistance. The streets of Boston, once bustling with trade and commerce, now echo with the chants of liberty and the clatter of British boots. As the sun sets on this fateful year, the air crackles with tension, a powder keg awaiting a single spark to ignite a revolution. The relationship between the colonists and the British troops stationed in their midst was, to put it mildly, strained. Imagine living in a city occupied by a foreign army, their every move a reminder of your subjugation. The Redcoats, as the British soldiers were known, were seen as an oppressive force, there to stifle dissent and enforce the will of a distant king. The colonists, proud and independent, chafed under their watchful gaze. Every encounter, from casual street corner exchanges to formal interactions, was fraught with tension. Those lobsterbacks were always looking for trouble, says a colonist, his voice thick with resentment. Pushing us around, calling us names. The days leading up to March 5, 1770, were deceptively calm. The bitter New England winter had settled over Boston, blanketing the city in a thick layer of snow and ice. But beneath this superficial tranquility, tensions continued to simmer. The presence of the British troops was a constant reminder of the simmering conflict. The stage was set for a confrontation, a clash that would have far-reaching consequences. The Sons of Liberty, a clandestine group dedicated to fighting for colonial rights, grew bolder in their defiance. On March 2, 1770, just three days before the fateful massacre, a seemingly minor incident occurred that would further escalate tensions in Boston. An argument broke out between a group of rope makers and several off-duty British soldiers who had come seeking work. Words were exchanged, insults flew, and the situation quickly escalated into a brawl. The fight spilled out into the street, drawing a crowd of onlookers, both colonists and soldiers, who quickly took sides. Those bloody lobsterbacks were trying to steal our jobs, shouted one of the rope makers, his face bruised and bloodied. The brawl at John Gray's rope walk sent shockwaves through Boston. It was a clear sign that the fragile peace between the colonists and the British troops was shattered. The incident, fueled by economic rivalry and simmering resentment, became a rallying cry for the Sons of Liberty and other patriot groups. The streets of Boston, already tense, grew even more volatile. Groups of colonists, their faces grim, gathered at the corners, their conversations filled with anger and apprehension. Something's gotta give, muttered a man in a tavern, his voice low and urgent as he slammed his tankard down on the table. The evening of March 4, 1770, settled over Boston like a shroud. An eerie quiet descended upon the city, a stark contrast to the turmoil of the preceding days. Inside their barracks, the British soldiers prepared for another long night of uneasy vigilance. The orders were clear, maintain order but avoid confrontation. Yet, the tension was palpable, a powder keg awaiting a single spark. Across town in the homes and taverns of Boston, the colonists were also on edge. I heard tell there's gonna be trouble tonight, whispered a woman to her neighbor, her voice hushed but urgent. As darkness fell upon Boston on March 5, 1770, a palpable sense of dread settled over the city. In the shadow of the imposing custom house, a lone British sentry, Private Hugh White, paced his post. The weight of responsibility lay heavy on White's young shoulders. He was acutely aware of the simmering tensions in the city, the hatred that seemed to emanate from every darkened doorway. His orders were simple, guard the custom house, challenge anyone who approached, and call for reinforcements if necessary. Little did he know that he was about to become the unwitting catalyst for a chain of events that would change the course of history. As he paced his lonely beat, a figure emerged from the shadows across the street. Halt! Who goes there? White challenged, his voice echoing in the stillness of the night. The boy, his name was Edward Garrick, had been sent on an errand by his master, a silversmith with a shop nearby. This casual disregard for his authority angered White, already on edge from the palpable tension in the air. Did you not hear me, boy? White barked. State your business. Garrick, startled by the soldier's sudden aggression, stumbled backward, dropping the package he carried. Leave the boy alone, you lobster bag bully, shouted a woman, her voice shrill with anger. Private White, outnumbered and fearing for his safety, retreated up the steps of the custom house, his musket raised in a defensive posture. He shouted for reinforcements, his voice barely audible above the growing roar of the crowd. The situation, once a minor altercation, 
was rapidly spiraling out of control. The crowd, their anger fueled by alcohol and years of perceived injustices, pressed closer, hurling insults and chunks of ice at the lone soldier. Just then, a detachment of British soldiers led by Captain Thomas Preston arrived on the scene. Shouts of fire and damn you fire rang out from the mob. In the flickering lamplight of that chaotic night, with tension stretched to a breaking point, a single shot pierced the air. It was a shot heard around the world, a shot that would reverberate through history, forever altering the destiny of a nation. The British soldiers, their training taking over, raised their muskets in unison and fired into the crowd. The air filled with the deafening roar of muskets, the screams of the wounded, and the shouts of panic-stricken citizens fleeing for their lives. The snow-covered street, once pristine in the moonlight, was quickly stained crimson with the blood of the fallen. They're murdering us in cold blood, screamed a woman, her voice filled with terror. When the smoke cleared and the echoes of gunfire faded into the night, five colonists lay dead or dying on the blood-soaked cobblestones. Among them was Crispus Attucks, his massive frame sprawled on the ground, his eyes staring vacantly up at the night sky. Attucks, a man who had known the sting of oppression firsthand, had become a martyr for the cause of liberty. News of the bloody massacre, as it quickly became known, spread like wildfire through Boston and then throughout the colonies. Those bloody butchers, they'll pay for this outrage, they'll pay in blood. In the aftermath of the massacre, Lieutenant Governor Thomas Hutchinson, fearing a full-scale uprising, acted swiftly to restore order. Eight soldiers, including Captain Preston, were arrested and charged with murder. John Adams, a prominent Boston lawyer and future president of the United States, agreed to defend the soldiers, asserting that they deserved a fair trial despite widespread public outrage. The trial, held several months later, was a media sensation, with both sides using the courtroom as a platform to advance their narratives. We were merely following orders, Your Honor. We were attacked by a mob, pelted with stones and ice. We fired in self-defense. The verdict in the Boston Massacre trial sent shockwaves through the colonies. Despite the prosecution's best efforts to portray the soldiers as cold-blooded murderers, the jury, after deliberating for several days, found Captain Preston and six of his men not guilty of murder. Two soldiers were found guilty of manslaughter, a lesser charge, and sentenced to branding on their thumbs. The verdict was a bitter pill for many colonists to swallow. They saw it as a miscarriage of justice, proof that British law offered them no protection. The Sons of Liberty and other patriot groups used the verdict to further stoke the flames of resentment against British rule. It says we can't rely on the British to protect us. We have to stand up for ourselves, defend our own rights. It's a travesty. Those soldiers murdered our people in cold blood and they walk free. What does it say about British justice? In the years following the Boston Massacre, the event became a powerful symbol in the growing divide between Great Britain and its American colonies. The Sons of Liberty, masters of propaganda, ensured that the memory of that bloody night remained fresh in the minds of the colonists. Paul Revere, a silversmith and ardent patriot, created one of the most iconic images of the era an engraving that depicted the British soldiers firing into an orderly crowd of unarmed colonists. Revere's engraving, though historically inaccurate in its portrayal of the event, became a powerful tool for galvanizing colonial opinion against British rule. Newspapers throughout the colonies, many of them sympathetic to the Patriot cause, reprinted Revere's engraving and published fiery editorials that condemned the massacre and called for resistance to British tyranny. The Boston Massacre, once a local tragedy, became a national rallying cry. Read all about it, British brutality exposed. The streets of Boston run red with the blood of innocent colonists, a newsboy cried, his voice echoing through the cobblestone streets of a colonial city. The Boston Massacre, though tragic in its immediate consequences, proved to be a pivotal turning point in the relationship between Great Britain and its American colonies. The event shattered any illusions of reconciliation and pushed the two sides closer to the brink of war. The memory of that cold March night, the sight of innocent blood staining the snow-covered streets of Boston, would linger in the minds of the colonists, fueling their resentment and strengthening their resolve to resist British rule. The Boston Massacre was not just a tragedy, it was a catalyst, a spark that ignited a revolution. The lessons learned from the Boston Massacre would resonate throughout the American Revolution and beyond. The importance of a free press, the right to assembly, the need for civilian control of the military, 
all these principles so dearly bought on that fateful night would become cornerstones of the new nation that emerged from the ashes of revolution. From that day forward, a historian would later write, the fate of the American colonies was sealed. The Boston Massacre was the point of no return, the moment when a dream of independence transformed into an unshakable determination to fight for freedom, whatever the cost. The Boston Massacre, a night of chaos and bloodshed, forever etched itself into the annals of American history. It wasn't just the tragic loss of life that made it significant, but the ripple effect it had on a nation teetering on the precipice of revolution. The events of March 5, 1770, served as a chilling reminder of the growing chasm between Great Britain and its American colonies. The massacre transformed the political landscape, pushing the colonies closer to the brink of rebellion. The incident, amplified by passionate rhetoric and skillful propaganda, ignited a firestorm of indignation across the colonies. What was once simmering resentment towards British rule boiled over into open defiance. The seeds of revolution, sown years earlier, had finally taken root. The massacre also highlighted the power of symbols in shaping public opinion. The image of Crispus Attucks, the former slave who fell that night, became a rallying cry for freedom and justice. His sacrifice, alongside the other victims, served as a stark reminder of the high cost of liberty. Their names, etched in stone and forever remembered, would inspire generations to come. The road to independence was paved with countless acts of courage, sacrifice, and unwavering belief in the cause of liberty. The Boston Massacre, though a tragedy, played a crucial role in forging the American spirit, a spirit that valued freedom above all else. It demonstrated the profound consequences of unchecked power and the importance of a government accountable to its people. The massacre served as a catalyst for change, fueling the flames of revolution and pushing the colonies toward a decisive break from British rule. It forced colonists to confront a fundamental question. Would they remain subservient to a distant king or fight for the right to govern themselves? The answer, resounding and resolute, echoed from the streets of Boston to the halls of parliament. The colonies would chart their own destiny. The legacy of the Boston Massacre extends far beyond the events of that fateful night. It lies in the very fabric of American identity, in the enduring principles of freedom, justice, and self-determination. It serves as a timeless reminder that the price of liberty is eternal vigilance and that the pursuit of a more perfect union is an ongoing journey. Each year, on the anniversary of the Boston Massacre, the city of Boston pauses to remember the fallen and to reflect on the significance of that pivotal event. It is a time for solemn remembrance, but also a time to celebrate the enduring legacy of courage and sacrifice that shaped a nation. On this day, we remember Crispus Attucks, Samuel Gray, James Caldwell, Samuel Maverick, and Patrick Carr, ordinary men who became extraordinary symbols of resistance. We honor their sacrifice and acknowledge the debt we owe them, their courage in the face of injustice, their unwavering belief in the cause of liberty continues to inspire us today. The Boston Massacre is not just a historical footnote, it is a living testament to the enduring power of the human spirit to strive for freedom and justice. It reminds us that the fight for liberty is never truly over, that each generation must rise to meet the challenges of its time and safeguard the hard-won freedoms we hold dear. The echoes of the Boston Massacre resonate even today, reminding us that the pursuit of freedom and justice is a constant struggle. The events of that night serve as a cautionary tale about the dangers of unchecked power, the importance of a free press, and the need for all citizens to be vigilant in safeguarding their rights. The Boston Massacre reminds us that change rarely comes without sacrifice, that progress often requires courage in the face of adversity. It challenges us to confront injustice wherever we find it and to speak out against oppression in all its forms. As we remember the Boston Massacre, let us draw inspiration from the courage of those who came before us. Let us honor their sacrifice by striving to create a more just and equitable society for all. Let us never forget that the price of liberty is eternal vigilance and that the fight for freedom continues. Please like and subscribe to the channel.